Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to our service. That is the it's the proper nine C. If that means anything to anyone, um, but it's the about the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. Not yet. I Not yet. No. Because it was like Pentecost was like the first Sunday of June. You're right. So well, anyway, welcome. Glad that you're here. Um, I've got my summer attire on, uh, mostly because putting an olive on is difficult and carrying it upstairs was difficult. So I'll tell you more about this in a little while. But let's begin with our opening hymn. Because of your great strength, your enemies cringe before you. 
All the earth bows down before you, sings to you, sings out your name. Come now and see the works of God, how wonderful he is in his doing toward all people. He turned the sea into dry land, so that they went through the water on foot, and there we rejoiced in him. In his might he rules forever. His eyes keep watch over the nations. Let no rebel rise up against him. Bless our God, you peoples. Make the voice of his praise to be heard, who holds our souls in life and will not allow our feet to slip. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Lord, to you, Lord Christ. The Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. And if anyone is there who shares in who, uh, sorry, whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone who is there shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you, cure the sick who are there, and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The seventy turned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of one God, Creator Christ and Holy Spirit. Amen. So, I, um, this is going to be a little bit of a sermon that I'm going to make up as I go along. I had started to type something. We have computer problems around here. I can't get to the file. Um, and I can't type very well anyway. So, you're going to just get what's ever rattling around in my head. Margaret Mead is a famous anthropologist. And she was asked, um, what were the first signs of civilization? And she pointed to a healed femur uh, that was about 15,000 years old. And her thinking on that was that the femur, which is the longest bone in the body, is in your leg. Um, if an animal, someone who didn't live within a civil society, were to break that, they would perish. They, they, can't, they can't fend for themselves. But to find someone that had a femur that had been healed meant that people gathered around that person to care for them, to provide food and uh, safety for them so that they would, they would make it through the time of healing. So the reason that I'm telling you this is that I experienced, as you can see, um, a break in my... Um, the radio, radius, excuse me, of my 
right arm. And that's the longest bone in the arm. And I shattered it pretty good. And uh, this is the first time that I have um, presided at Eucharist since I got these new glasses, which I got Thursday the 16th of June. And that's important because um, they are progressive lenses. And I'm sure many of you probably have had or have progressive lenses. I never have. And so even today, reading the gospel, I might have missed a line or two because I'm doing this and I can't quite see where I'm at. Well, on the morning of the 18th, just two days after getting my glasses, I was very excited. It was a beautiful Saturday morning and I was out for an exercise walk. And I texted two of our interns that you may remember from here, Aaron Twait and Denise Stavura. They were both to be ordained Episcopal priests. So I texted them and said, congratulations, I'll see you in an hour. And five minutes later, I was walking up where there was a curb, couldn't see it with my new fancy glasses, stumbled and broke my wrist. And it was a nasty break, uh, many, many pieces. And since then I've had surgery and <clears throat> I uh, have been in the recovery process. And this is my friend Tigger, that my team, um, Lisa and Leah and Jennifer, brought over to me while I was healing. There's a lot more to the story about Tigger, which I will send, share with you at some point, but it's kind of, he's kind of my spirit animal, if you will. I'm kind of a Tigger-like person. Um, <clears throat> so this represents for me the more than a civilization that gathered around me, um, but the beloved community. And <clears throat> I'm very grateful for all of those people that um, were praying for me, those who helped take care of me, the, the doctors. The, the morning that I broke my arm, we went to TRIA. There's a little commercial for TRIA. We went to TRIA, and in 45 minutes, they had given me an x-ray, they had put me through traction, they had had a consult with the surgeon and put me on the surgical schedule mm -hmm. and put a cast on me and sent me home uh, with some decent drugs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> some good painkillers. So that was the first part of the, the community that gathered. But then all of the people here at Episcopal Homes, I got several cards from people and um, but it made me think, too, about all the vulnerabilities that we experience, especially as we get older. Um, and I'm aware, I've always had empathy for those that I visit in the TCU or elsewhere here who have had falls. Uh, but now I feel it in a, a much deeper, deeper way. Um, and I, my the heart goes out to people because I'm um, almost two weeks out from the injury and I'm still in a lot of pain. But I do feel held up and supported by the beloved community. And I think that's what, oh, I'm supposed to talk about the gospel. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think that's what Jesus was uh, encouraging the 70 to go out and do, was to build that beloved community that holds one another uh, more than just a civilization, but um, supports each other through all, all the good times and the bad, and reminds us that we have our place in the kingdom of God. Amen. You can sit right there. No, you can't. <laughs> Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he came from heaven. 
Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. so freely given to us. For the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea, Lord, we thank you. For all that is gracious in the lives of women and men that reveals the image of Christ to us, Lord, we thank you. For our daily food and drink, our homes and families and friends, the staff and volunteers here at Episcopal Homes, Lord, we thank you minds to think and remember, hearts to love, and ways to be kind to one another, Lord, we, we thank you. For strength and courage to accept growing weakness, and patience in suffering, Lord, we, we thank, thank you. For all whose lives are closely linked with ours. For those in any need or trouble. For the communion of saints in all times and places. For all the departed we have loved. Lord, we thank you. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. To him be praise and glory with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let's, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Look, peace, the, uh, peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Please share that with one another. today, and that is that uh, for those of you who have been coming to church in uh, the last few weeks, the air conditioner has been broken in Coventry, the, ch uh, the, chap the other chapel, and that is now repaired, so we will be back to having church on Sunday morning in Coventry, not over in Auto Hall, so uh, something important for you to know, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be back there for Maryland as well, we usually know as well, so. Walk in love as Christ loved us and made himself a sacrifice and an offering to God.
and also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the, night, on the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy, and peace, and at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us give the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Holy food for holy people.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keeps your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.